Hi, this is the first tutorial of a new playlist which uh, relates to the transformation of uh, one or more point clouds in a triangular mesh. Uh, essentially, we will uh, analyze again the steps of the 3D scanning pipeline, but dealing with uh, a point cloud. And uh, some of the steps of this playlist clearly will be, uh, will be available even if you are not dealing with several point clouds that have to be put together to create a final model, but also when you're uh, starting with a single point cloud. So, uh, the first step here is to try to reduce, if possible, the number of points uh, which describe each point cloud. Uh, why this? Uh, well, essentially, uh, the idea is that uh, it's better not to have too many points when you're dealing with uh, the, the processing of point clouds, of more point clouds, or even only one, and uh, so it's quite uh, important to be able to uh, eliminate the points which are really redundant in the context of the scene. What we are seeing here is a typical result of a, a scanning made uh, with a phase shift scanner or a time of flight scanner. The time of flight scanner are placed in a position in the space and they make a 360 degrees uh, scanning of the environment around the scanner. Uh, okay, one of the most important uh, things in this is that uh, the resolution of the scan uh, is clearly dependent on the distance of the point with respect to the scanner position. This means that all the points which are very near to the scanner are very, 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 very dense, like this, while all the points which are more far, they are less dense. Uh, Usually, the density of points uh, in the, the position near to the scanner is really even too big for your necessity. Uh, for example, in this case, if we get really near, we can see that the distance between points in this position, so quite near to the scanner position, is around uh, one millimeter, one millimeter and a half. Uh, essentially, probably, this is a, a bit too much. Uh, is, the density is really too big. Um, so, uh, why not trying to reduce the number of points in this point cloud, trying to uh, find the right density for your reconstruction project. So, for example, just think that uh, when you're making a, a, a 3D scanning campaign using a time of flight or phase shift scanner, um, you essentially have more or less one, the idea of the density of the points that you would like to, to acquire. You, say like uh, one point every half centimeter, uh, one point every centimeter and so on. So uh, if you have an idea of it in advance, you can try to resample this uh, point cloud so that uh, the point on average has the distance that, you, that was your uh, um, goal for the, the, the acquisition. Okay, so uh, supposing that for this uh, particular scanning, we would like to acquire for each scan one point uh, every, say, half centimeter, we can try to sample the points in a smart way, so that all the points which are very dense, the near to the scanner position, will be sampled, uh, while all the points which are much less dense, which are more far to the scanner, will be preserved. And there is one filter in MeshLab which is extremely useful for that, and it works really well. Uh, you can find it in the sampling sub-menu. It's called Poisson Disk Sampling. The big advantage of Poisson Disk Sampling is that you can explicitly uh, tell the filter which is the, the, the average the distance of the points in the point cloud, so that the, the algorithm will uh, remove all the points where the hair are very dense and they will preserve, it will preserve the points where the area are not dense. So, just suppose that uh, uh, we want to have uh, a point every half, half centimeter. So I write here around uh, five millimeters. So this is the distance that I want, uh, the, the, the minimum distance of the points in the sampled point clouds that I want to produce. When you're dealing with the sampling of an existing point cloud, you, don't, you, you need to uh, check this uh, option, base mesh subsampling. This means that uh, 
the, the points that uh, uh, gener uh, gener generate the, the point cloud will be sampled. So uh, the samples will be kept or just uh, thrown away. So there are no uh, position of the points will be changed during this sampling. If you don't uh, set this option, you will have uh, not so nice results. Okay. So essentially what you need to set here is your uh, target distance between points and just set this option and then launch the filter. It usually takes some time and uh, it creates a new level uh, where you will have your sampled version of the point cloud. What we expect is that the, the density of the points will be much lower here while all the points which are far from the scanner will, will have the very same density. You can see here that we have our original point cloud here. Now I switch to the sampled one. You see here that uh, even if I just go uh, a bit more far with respect to the point of view, you see that uh, all the points which are in this area have been perfectly preserved. This is the original scan. And this is the sample scan. While all the points, which here you can see they are, their density is uh, uh, really much more um, continuous, while at the beginning the density of this point cloud was really very big, like this. Okay. So what, we do, what did, we, did we gain with that? The original point cloud was made by more than 5 million points, while after the Poisson disk sampling, now we have uh, 2 million points, so we reduce the number of points in the point cloud by 60%, uh, but at the same time, uh, we really preserved actually uh, the density uh, and the, the amount of information that is given by this uh, uh, particular scan. So, uh, when you're dealing especially with uh, data coming from uh, time of flight or phase shift scanner, my uh, advice is, first of all, before taking all the point clouds and try to put them together, for example, to make a, a preliminary sampling so that you can reduce the density of the points around the scanning uh, position. And this will make all the works afterwards really very easy. This post on disk sampling can be extremely useful also in a number of uh, our applications. Uh, sometimes when you have uh, um, point clouds coming from other acquisition devices or from other algorithms like even, like even the, the, the points coming from the reconstruction from images, you can have a very uneven density in the points and sometimes um, removing uh, points where they are really too dense can also help in the final reconstruction. So this is uh, the kind of preliminary step to prepare the point clouds uh, for the alignment and the merging phase. Thank you. Thank you.